Hello and welcome to the second in a series of three short videos about 12 lead ECGs for the I've Got the Rhythm Facebook group. In the first episode, we took a brief look at the origin of the ECG and focused on the limb leads. To do this, we went back to school and had lessons in both history and geometry. Today, we will concentrate on the chest or precordial leads and how, with the right preparation, we can obtain a good rhythm strip for interpretation purposes in the first place. And lesson three is maths. Here I will show you that four plus six actually equals twelve. How can four plus six equal twelve, I hear you ask? Well, before you take your shoes and socks off to start counting, let me explain. If we have four limb leads and then add these to six more leads on the patient's chest, what we end up getting from 10 leads is 12 views of the heart. So there you have it. 4 plus 6 actually equals 12. When we place the six leads on the patient's chest, unlike the limb leads which look at the heart in the vertical plane, the precordial leads take a view of the heart in the lateral plane, essentially looking from front to back. The precordial leads are named from V1 going round to V6. So if we start putting it all together from our first video, four limb and six precordial leads produce 12 views of the heart. This overlay shows how on a standard 12 lead ECG printout, the limb and chest leads relate to what we see on paper. The six views on the left come from the limb leads and the six views on the right come from the chest leads. Now we have covered the maths, let's move on to lesson number four. And lesson four is equations. Where P stands for preparation, E, equipment, Q for quality, and I for interpretation. The C stands for comfort, S for skin, N in our equation is for new electrodes, and L for lead placement. A comfortable patient with proper skin prep reduces muscle tremor and movement artifact. Ensure the patient's skin is dry and abraded if necessary and make sure they are as relaxed and as comfortable as possible. A packet of electrodes are designed for single use. A new and in-date pack for each diagnostic 12 lead ECG should be used. Together with correct lead placement you will reduce faults and poor tracings which will give you a better quality ECG to interpret. Correct lead placement is achieved through identifying anatomical landmarks and is not done by just sticking the electrodes where it looks like they should go. Limb leads, as we know, have that name for a reason and should therefore go on the limbs. All easy so far. But what about the chest leads? To find the anatomical landmarks, you should be getting hands on and actually physically feeling for the fourth and fifth intercostal spaces. The top part of the sternum is called the manubrium. At its junction with the body of the sternum is a notch. Go on, feel for your own. This is the sternal angle, or angle of Louis as it is also known. The second pair of ribs are attached to the sternum at this point. So now you have found the second rib, you know that the second intercostal space is immediately below it. You are now able to palpate down to the fourth intercostal space and have located the correct level at which to place your electrodes for V1 and V2. Use the same technique for finding the fifth intercostal space and place your electrodes for leads V4, V5 and V6 along this line laterally in a mid-clavicular, left anterior auxiliary and left mid-auxiliary line. Lead V3 is then sighted between V2 
and V4. You are now ready to get a good quality ECG printed out for you to interpret. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you found this introduction to ECGs of benefit. And don't forget, never stop learning. Hope to see you all again soon.